Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split City DIY, and this week I had one of my favorite things happen. I had a random problem pop up that was totally video worthy, and I can't wait to share the information that I learned with you so they can hopefully benefit uh, your personal problem solving and DIY endeavors. Uh, this past weekend, I did a little bit of soldering, and one of the things I was soldering was um, a Tiwa pedal that my boyfriend had um, found. And one of the problems was the nine volt battery pad, which if you're familiar with um, guitar pedals, there's a little vinyl nine volt battery pad that you can um, plug in to power the pedal. Embossed pedals there under the hood here. Um, and the ground wire was actually disconnected from the battery pad. Um, and when I opened it up, I realized it was because it had broken off of the solder pad. So resoldering it was really simple. After I opened it up, saw what was happening. What I did first was the wire for ground was stranded wire, so I tinned it. What that means is you put a little bit of solder on the wire itself, and that makes it kind of a flat point similar to single stranded wire. And then um, I actually heated up the old solder pad um, and put the ground wire into that solder to kind of hold it, and then put some new solder um, all around. I may have put a little bit more than I needed to, but I thought better safe than sorry, since you would be kind of yanking the guitar um, pedal around by putting a 9 volt battery in now all the time. So I wanted to make sure it was a really solid connection. Now, I was a little disappointed when I got home from soldering, plugged in a 9 volt battery to the pedal, and I didn't get power. Uh, that made me think something else was wrong, specifically with the 9 volt battery connector. So I have a power supply that I use for my pedals. I tend to not use batteries. I plugged it in and still no power when I just plugged in the power supply to this pedal via the um, connector right at the top here, standard connector. So that made me think something was wrong inside the pedal. So I opened it up, pulled out the circuit board. Um, this pedal, the t it was manufactured between um, the 70s and 80s. Uh, so it's a fairly old pedal. And actually they didn't make a second revision of this. The, TW1 is the only version of this pedal that exists. Boss later replaced it with the Auto Wall pedal series, uh, which is more digital components, uh, but this is pure analog goodness. So you open it up, you get this really nicely populated PCB. And I looked all over and I didn't see any broken solder joints anywhere. Everything looked to be in really good shape, but I did notice two things that made me think maybe I was doing something wrong empowering this pedal. Um, the first thing is there is a thing on the back that says for longer battery life, always keep the cord disconnected from instrument jack when not in use. So that would be the input here on the side. And I thought that was a little bit interesting that that would affect drainage of battery. But then when I was looking at the circuit inside, I noticed that the leads from the battery pack seem to kind of intersect with the input jacks wire leads as well. So I did a little bit of research online, which maybe I should have done previously, but hey, isn't that what DIY is all about? Not knowing what the hell you're doing and just going for it. So did a little bit of research and it turns out that the boss pedals made in the 70s and 80s and including the T-Wa, um, they were meant to run on 12 volts of power. The only way that this pedal and its accompanying pedals will run on 9 volt is if it is hooked up in a signal chain with other pedals that are also receiving power. And what happens is on the PCB, there's capacitors. Those capacitors are actually charging themselves up with the power that's traveling through the signal chain in order to have enough power to get this pedal to work on nine volts. So basically, the signal chain of all your pedals and your guitar and your amp, and all of those are powered, it's creating basically a circuit in parallel that's powering through the input and output jacks. And sure enough, when I hooked it up in my pedal loop and plugged in all the cables, I had power and it worked. And basically, by having the instrument jack disconnected, um, I had an incomplete circuit. It was open. But by plugging in a jack to the input jack that was also connected to another pedal that had power, 
I was closing the circuit and allowing the signal to pass through and also allowing enough power to flow through the circuit as well. Which I just find to be so interesting. And when you look at the actual PCB and the wire leads and also I was able to find um, the original schematic for this pedal as well that I'll link down below, you can see that the power signal is definitely going through the input jack connector and that is why you need the instrument jack to be populated as well as power going through from other pedals. But then I was curious, do my other pedals act this way and have I just never known this because I've always had more than one pedal powered. So I was curious and I checked and my other boss pedal, a DS1 distortion pedal, the same thing. I needed it to be in the signal chain uh, for it to work and I opened that pedal up and I looked and sure enough, same leads going through the input jack, same wiring up. And when you think about how compact boss pedals are, as you can see, it fits in the palm of my hand and I don't have a very large hand. Like they're very small and compact and that's why people like them. They're rugged and you know you're gonna have like very compact circuitry. Now, in comparison and stark contrast, an electro harmonics pedal, which they're kind of known for being a little bit bigger, I have a small clone chorus pedal from them. I opened that up, but you can tell by looking at the wire leads that it's wired up in a completely different way. Power is not flowing through those input connectors. And as a result, when I had it just plugged into power by itself, I was able to power it on, power it off, and it showed power. Same thing with an Ibanez pedal I have as well. And it's because they're just not wired up the same way as the Boss pedals. So I thought that was really interesting. And also, otherwise, if I hadn't looked into that and tried it out, I would have written this pedal off as being broken and old, which is would have been very unfortunate because it has a really cool tone and really cool effects. And also, such a satisfying toggle click, like super analog. Very cool. Um, so I think that's very interesting about the Boss pedals. Um, and I think the more that you know, about your instrument gear, the better as well. And one thing I'm gonna be getting into net is actually building my own guitar effects pedals, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's something I've been researching for a bit and I'm almost at the point where I'm gonna start building my first circuit. So um, working on this kind of surprise project uh, gave me some more insights into how these little boxes are working, um, which is really cool. So, that's been another episode of Blitz City DIY. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you learned something. Let me know down below in the comments um, if you're using Boss effects pedals or other effects pedals. Have you had similar power issues? Um, also, are you into batteries or power supply? I feel like that's a heated debate. Um, so let me know. Uh, like or dislike the video, the video depending on how you felt. Uh, find me on all social media madness. Links are down below. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.